Hi everyone, Srini here. Welcome back to my channel. So if you are new to this channel, please do consider subscribing to it and hit the bell icon to get notifications. And please do check out my new channel. So that is going to be uh, coding technology as well as AI. I'll be creating a lot of useful content on Python and AI tutorial series in the upcoming channel, new channel. So please do look at that and subscribe to it. So today we are going to look at the part three in automation lead series, sorry, the part four in automation lead series. And this particular part four is going to cover specifically Selenium locators. So there is going to be a lot of questions which can be asked around the locators. So to test your knowledge on the locators area, if you know how to construct the locator, we do have a lot of different tools which do suggest us like selectors, hub, etc. But you should be also being able to create your own locator because if the situation demands in a project that you need to create a locator dynamically right at runtime you should be able to do it without consuming much time so that you can progress well in your project deliverables so let's get started on to that i'll take some examples realistic examples what kind of questions we can get in the interview so this is what i had covered in the previous video and um, today's topic we're going to cover few different types of questions which they can ask you they can ask you to identify that in a table you need to check if this particular value if any value i'm just taking an example like example samsung product or any such uh, product example right if it exists inside the table you have a test case like that to check if it is present or not if it is present then what is the location which row it is present and maybe some other value also we may need to find out along with this particular product then there might be questions using xpath access where you have to use your knowledge in terms of just making it to zoom just giving it a high zoom size. You may be required to basically identify like a parent, child, ancestor, sibling. There are so many different things. I have already created a video on XPath access in detail. You can look at that in my Selenium playlist. But I'm just writing down what all things are important for you to know. So there is ancestor, there is descendant. So all these things are important. So you have to ensure that you know how to use XPath access also. So you have following sibling. Then you have preceding sibling. So if you are new to this concept, please do watch that video and then come back to this video. And then of course, CSS selector. Now there are different ways for CSS selector. I'll create a separate video on different types of CSS selector. And that will definitely help your knowledge on the same. So let's get started with these three different types of questions which can come. So I've done one thing. I've tried to open a few websites, which we are going to practice as to how the interviewer can ask you questions. Okay. I've taken some real life example scenarios as well as some dummy websites so that we can get different kinds of scenarios to practice. Okay. So what I've done here is this particular uh, thing here, right? It has a table, like a web table. So what we have to do when we try to normally construct a locator is we need to do right click or do function F12. So and click on inspect or do function F12 and this kind of a elements section would open up. Right. Normally we use it to check our network or some other kind of a calls, API calls happening, but we can also use this function F12 to open up this window elements window. Now let's say this is all a part of the current table, which I'm having here. And this is the table body right this is a table entire table thing if you see there is no name here inside the table okay and if i just want to find out how many tables are there in xpath we have to use this particular way of right finding out how many tables are there so if you see there are six tables in the current website okay. there are six tables okay let's say we want to find out about this particular table okay. let's go and check what is the second table Okay. Second table is also having the same one. Okay. So what I'm going to do, if I want to, let's say, utilize the first table, I can just say like this. So this is one of the strategy in XPath that if you have multiple values returned, you can put a parenthesis outside that locator and say indexing approach. So I've put indexing approach here with index one. So I'm finding out for the first table. Okay. Now in this first table, Let's say we want to check if the commencement meeting is a part of your table or not. So what I have to do is it is a part of a cell. If you see here, it is a part of some cell inside a particular row. Okay. So I will be going directly like this. If you want to go inside any row, 
no matter which row it might be present. But if you want to find out if it is present or not, just write TD for the cell. If you see the tags here, for every table, there is a T body, which is comprising of the, the rows as well as the column. And for every row, we have a TR tag representing a row. Like you can see how it is getting currently highlighted. And this particular one is for the heading, description, data, location. This is the first actual data, TR tag. And inside the TR tag, we have got three columns data, right? Represented by TD. Now we are interested in the first cell. If you already know which is the column index, fine. You can go for TD of one. It, now you can see that it is going to show you all the values inside the first column only. It is not going to check in any other cell. So this is going to save your performance time if you write the column index also. But let's say you're not sure about the column, then it's fine. You can leave it without any index. Now the next part comes is we need to check if it, this particular commencement meeting is present or not. So I can say contains text and copy this commencement. I'll copy the entire thing, okay. commencement meeting. And we will have to close the bracket. Uh, yeah, I think we have to just check if we have done any extra space here. Yeah, that's fine. So there was an extra space. So now if you see, this is giving us an exact match. So this will return true when I try to check that this does it contain this value. If I try to do any assertion in my test case, it will return true. And we can also store a list of elements. Okay. In case if it is returning you multiple values, right? You can store it into a list of elements. And then you can try to identify from that uh, which particular row number or which particular element is having this value. So that is the logic which we can construct once we find out a match as per our test case expectation. So this was one of the questions which they can expect you to answer within a cell. I mean, within a table, web table, you need to identify if some content is matching or not. So likewise, you can practice from other websites like demoguru.com also. Okay. Now let's go to Amazon. Okay. Now in Amazon, they can roughly ask you like how many different types of hyperlinks are present. If you see here, this is a hyperlink. Then there might be hyperlinks somewhere here. Okay. There are so many hyperlinks in this current page. Keyboards might be hyperlink. We don't know. So let's do one thing. Let's again inspect. And let's say the question is you want to find out the hyperlink. I, I, we know that hyperlink in Selenium is identified by anchor tag. So use double forward slash for relative locator and say A. And if you see anchor href tags, there are 737 hyperlinks in this particular page. Now, if at all they are interested to know the input text box, right input. And you can see that we are having these many different types of input boxes which are present. Now, let's say they are asking you to find how many drop downs are present. So go for select tag. And there is currently only one select tag for a drop down. Let's see if there is any table involved here. This is the entire thing, right? This is a table. Are there any images present? So you have to know what is the tag name for each and every type of element so that you will be able to answer these kind of questions, which are very uh, straightforward, but you need to know the syntax or what is representing the tag name for every type of locator. Okay. Now let's go for the next website. We'll take flipkart.com. And this one, I will be using it for the XPath access kind of a question, which is very uh, popular these days, the XPath access. Okay. So let's say the interviewer says that there is something shown at the header here. Right? This is the top header section, which we see different icons or tiles like grocery, mobiles, fashion, electronics, home furniture, appliances, travel, beauty toys, and more, and the two wheelers. Let's say if they want you to identify how many of them are present after mobiles, how many elements are present, and also find out the elements and get their name, like fashion, electronics, home furniture. We just have to not only find out the count, we also have to find out the names as well, along with the element count, we need to find the name. So what we need to do is we need to inspect this section. Okay, it's a tricky thing. It's the right hand side, right? Of the fashion we need to find out, whichever are following after mobile. So let's first identify the mobile. 
so you can take a locator inspector and go to your mobiles yeah okay i have left the cursor now this is the one which is highlighting mobiles but if you see here it involves character as well as number now this could be dynamic in nature it could change over a future course of time so better not to depend on that one go a little bit above and uh, yeah you see here that we have like this as an entire div section which is covering all the different icons if you go one level below then you have an anchor tag then you've got one more level below you have got another anchor tag for mobiles so this looks to be fine like we can go for area label equal to mobiles okay. so let's first identify the current element which is anchor tag right at the rate area hyphen label equal to mobiles and now we have got the current element highlighted but your question is to find the elements to the right side of mobiles now look at your current way how it is you know uh, present in the hierarchy this is a div tag fashion then you have got electronics also as a div tag a woman furniture is also a div tag okay so one two three then you have got anchor tag, fourth one. Then you have got another hyperlink, fifth tag, right? Then comes beauty toys and more, and then comes two wheeler. So as we know in XPath Access, there is one popular one called following sibling. Means following this element, if I want to find out mobiles, I can find out, find out all the siblings at the mobiles level. So where is mobiles element? Here it is, right? So all these tags which you see are at the same level as anchor tag. So they are like the children of this parent. This is the parent div tag, right? So how is the syntax? We need to write a forward slash. We need to say following sibling. This is the thing. Don't mess up with the name. It is not siblings. Neither uh, the spelling has to be also correct. And there should be a hyphen in between following and sibling. Then we need to put double colon. Now we need to put the tag name, whichever tag names we want to, uh, you know, find out let's say we want to find out anchor tag so there are only two anchor tag appliances and travel if you want to find out div then we have got five anchor tags fashion electronics home furniture beauty toys and more and two wheeler let's say if i put star here we go right so we have found out all the seven following sibling elements after mobiles just using star so this is very tricky many candidates do not understand what to mention here whether to mention a div what to do so the question was simpler that you just have to find out the elements to the right side of fashion now what if the question was to find out the element before mobiles then you have to go for preceding sibling and you can see we have got only one element returned right so this is one of the useful question i'll also create a detailed video where i'll try to explain you all different types of css selector and more detailed examples of different expert access so stay tuned for the same Thank you for watching my video and do let me know if you liked it or any additional thing I would you like me to create on this locators part in Selenium. I'll be happy to create a video on that. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notifications. Thank you all.